guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up a VPN between my local network and Azure. Now, this is something that I do quite a bit. I don't main a persistent connection between Azure and my local network. I mainly do this when I stand up resources in Azure for like a lab or a demonstration, and I need that private connection for some reason. So I'll create the connection, use it for a while, then tear it down. And I do this enough that I pretty much memorize how to do it. So I just want to document that process to show you how to do it. It's not something that you have to spend a lot of time learning. So once you set this up, it's pretty easy to repeat it. So here's my process. I'm going to walk you through the components first, and then I'll show you how to do it in the Azure portal and also using PFSense. So for this to work, of course, you're going to need Azure. And Azure is going to have a bunch of resources that you're going to be running in Azure. That could be virtual machines or SQL databases or app servers. And all of that is connected to a virtual network. Now, a virtual machine is going to use a NIC, and these platform as a service resources will use private endpoints. But in any case, it's all connected to some kind of Azure VNet. Then on the other side, you're going to have a local network, and the local network will be your home, and that's, that could be any number of different things. It could be a PC, a, a tablet, a phone, it could be IoT. You have all kinds of things that connect to networks nowadays, and then you're going to have some kind of appliance or some kind of router on the edge, and so that's where PFSense comes into the mix. Now, I use PFSense as my router, firewall, and security appliance, and I run this uh, basically to carve up my network and manage all the traffic, and one thing you can do with it is create IPsec tunnels with PFSense. On the other end, you have an Azure virtual network gateway. And this particular resource is a kind of high-level resource that you use to connect remote networks to Azure, and it supports express routes as well as VPNs. And it has a lot of different configuration options that you can use with it, but we're mostly interested in the IPsec instance with a VPN. And so between that, we're going to set up an IPsec tunnel and then on top of that we're going to put a vpn in play and that will allow us to route traffic over the internet that is secured that it can't be tampered with between these two endpoints so and this will allow me to have basically a contiguous network between azure and my local network and then pfsense will handle all the routing uh, from azure to my local network and vice versa on the other end the virtual network gateway will allow me to have my local traffic be translated into something that azure can understand on virtual networks and therefore i can access resources over that encrypted tunnel as if it were sitting in the same network either locally or in azure so I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm going to create a virtual network gateway. I'm not going to actually go through the, the entire creation process uh, because uh, the process for creating one of these can take a while, but I'm going to walk you through the Azure portal and then I'm going to end up using this one right here to actually connect to. But to create one of these, uh, just find virtual network gateways in the search and then you'll get a list of them. You can then click create and then it'll walk you through the creation process. So you can do blaze-vpn2 for the name. And then you can select between express route and VPN, and then you can choose a SKU. Now you have different SKUs and they have basically different bandwidth availabilities and also feature sets. Uh, but if you're not sure which one to use, you can use VPN gateway one, and that's gonna be a gen one uh, virtual network gateway. And that will work fine for what I'm doing. Now there are other features of course that you can turn on with some of these other ones, but for this one, that's gonna work fine. And you can choose uh, express route if you want to go that route uh, express routes basically where you take a piece of hardware and install it in your data center and then your isp will serve as the connection between your data center and azure and it's a high speed highly reliable connection and it has low latency so that's definitely what an enterprise would use but if you're a small office or a medium-sized office and you don't need that kind of reliability or that kind of latency you can choose a vpn and that one will work for most purposes now you you need to create a virtual network if you don't already have one, but you can use an existing one. This is going to tell me I have a gateway already attached to this one. But if you don't, you will see that it, will, it wants to create a subnet called gateway subnet, and that will assign to that particular virtual network a subnet that's dedicated for the purpose of running a virtual network gateway. So it requires that you have a dedicated virtual network uh, with a subnet dedicated to the virtual network gateway. And uh, this one already has one. So you can only have one virtual network gateway for each VNet that you're using. But for my purposes, I don't need to recreate that. But if I was going to create a new one, I would create a new network and it would have that available to it. Now you'll need a public IP address and the public IP address would be, uh, need a name of course, and then you would assign it a name and it would say blazes VPN ADDR1 or something like that. And 
Beyond that, you really don't need a lot of other settings. And this is going to give it a public IP address that you will then connect your PFSense appliance to. And you can use BGP if you want to. Uh, BGP uh, is Border Gateway Protocol, which basically means that it will broadcast routes from Azure to your appliance and vice versa. If you have the BGP enabled, it will broadcast your local network's routes to Azure. And therefore anything that is on your Azure network will be able to automatically configure its own routes to send traffic back and forth between your local network and Azure. For my purposes, I don't need that because when I configure my network, I basically just have two different networks and then I can just use some high level routes that will basically take care of all the traffic on my local network and all the traffic on Azure. And for smaller setups, that's fine. But if you have a very complex network, BGP is your friend because that means that it will automatically update routes and do all that kind of stuff. But since I don't need that, I'm not gonna enable it. And then once you do all of this, you can then tag it and then review and create it. So once you have your virtual network gateway created, it's gonna look something like this. And we'll need to create a connection to PFSense. But before we do that, we need something that represents PFSense on the other end. And that's where a local network gateway comes in. So back over here in our resources, we're gonna add another resource right here. And this is a local uh, network gateway. Now this resource doesn't you know, cost anything. It's just a proxy for PFSense on my side. And it just basically defines the local network and as a resource on Azure so that we can use this as a way to uh, connect Azure to my local network. So to get this, we basically want to put it in the same resource group in the same region. It doesn't have to be in the same resource group or region, but we want to call it, let's just call it Blaze Local or something like that. And you can choose an IP address or a fully qualified domain name. I recommend using an IP address because that's also what it's going to use to basically identify the networks on each side. So to do that, just do what is my IP uh, into Google and uh, you can get a link like this. And so this is my IP4 um, IP address. So I'm gonna use an IP address and sometimes that changes, but if you wanted to use FQDN, uh, you could probably have to figure out how to do that. But I typically just use the IP address. And for the most part, my IP address, address rarely changes. Then I'm gonna put in the address space for my local network, which is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And that defines my local network. And once I'm done with that, I can tag it if I want to, or I can configure BGP. And, um, and I'm not using BGP at all on this. I'm not gonna broadcast any net routes because I have a fairly straightforward setup. Everything is within this address space on my local network. So basically all the routes, doesn't matter which subnet I'm using in my own network or uh, which network I'm using in my own network, all of them follow within that particular IP space. So the routes will then of course get sent over to Azure uh, for traffic that is coming into PFSense. So it will see 10.0.0 something, and then it will send everything over to my local network, and then it will sort it out to one of my several networks on this side. So once you have that resource created, you can click go to resource, and this is where you can also configure connections as well, because it's basically the analog to a virtual network gateway, but in this case, it's a local network gateway, and you can configure connections here as well. So with this one, you can click add, or you can do this from the virtual network gateway, but this is where you basically bring together both the network on Azure and your local network by creating a connection. And so I'm gonna put in the same resource group, same subscription. I'm gonna do a site to site IPsec tunnel right here. And notice you can do express route and a VNet to VNet connection, but I'm doing uh, site to site. I'm gonna call it blaze uh, local, uh, and then dash two dash Azure or something like that. And uh, this one will create that network connection. And then this is where we configure our um, connection between the two. And then, so I'm gonna choose this particular virtual network gateway, and I'm gonna choose this local network gateway. And so that's bringing together my VPN and my local. I'm gonna use I2, which is the protocol you'll wanna use. And then you can use a custom Ike policy. So I'm going to click this right here and I'm going to set some settings here. And we're going to basically just replicate these settings in PFSense. So uh, for 
Ike, there's two phases to the uh, process. There's uh, the Ike phase one, which is basically the the, I, the authentication uh, phase, and then Ike phase two is the connection phase, which basically sets up the the networking. So this one, I'm going to use AES two fifty six, and then I'm going to use SHA two fifty six for the the hash algorithm, and then I'm going to use uh, group two. And I'm basically going to use the same settings on this side. I'm going to use uh, AES two fifty six. On this side, I'm going to use SHA-256 for the, the hash, and then I'm going to use uh, PFS2 for the group. And so that's creating the custom uh, policy for this end, and then everything else is pretty much the default. So you can set this up as the initiator only or the responder only if you want your appliance, your IPF sense appliance or virtual machine, whatever you're using to create this, you would select responder only. If you want Azure to be the initiator, let it be the initiator only, but I'm going to leave it as default. Beyond that, you can pretty much leave the settings as is. And um, you off, you need to give it a, a pre-shared key, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do PDW123123, which is going to be my pre-shared key. And now I'm going to click review and create, and it's going to validate the settings, and then we can create this. So this takes a few, a few seconds to create. It doesn't take forever, but once this is done, you'll be ready to go on the Azure side. Once everything is set up on your virtual network gateway on Azure, you'll need to get the public IP address for, from either the overview blade or from the IP resource itself. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to come back over here to PFSense. So this is PFSense. I'm using this in a pretty standard setup, pretty stock setup. I do have some non-trivial setups for my network, but for the most part, this is a pretty typical setup for PFSense. So uh, the option you want to choose is IPsec. I use OpenVPN for a Road Warrior VPN, so that is a point-to-site VPN for my phones and my laptops if I want to get back into my network when I'm out and about. But if I want to do a site-to-site, -site, I use IPsec. And this is going to be the one I'm going to use for Azure, of course. So the things that we need to configure here are two things. We need to add Ike phase one, which is basically the authentication between the two endpoints. And then there is Ike phase two, which is the network piece that configures the networking. So Ike phase one, we're just going to add P1 right here. And this is where we're going to put in the remote gateways IP address, which is what I've just copied from Azure. And then we come down here and we put in our pre-share key, which is PWD123123. And then um, you would want to configure phase one proposal, which is basically all those configurations we put into our policy. So I used AES for the algorithm, 256-bit key length, SHA-256 SHA hash, and then I do use DH group two for um, the key set. And once I have all of these things set, I then come down here and click save, and that will save the settings for phase one. Now we need to add phase two. So we can click show phase one, phase two right here, and then we can add phase two into this. And this is basically where we configure our network. So uh, this one, we're gonna be using IPv4 tunnel, and we're gonna use a network. I have all these subnets. Like I said, I have VLANs for a lot of different things. I have one for my, my laptops and phones. I have one for my guest network, and one for my kids, and then one for IoT stuff, basically. And uh, I'm gonna be using the entire network though, uh, so I can have everything routed correctly from Azure back to my local network. And then IP, uh, the IP traffic will be figured out by PFSense on my local uh, contacts. And then they will take all the traffic from my local network and port it over to Azure if it's hitting one of those IP addresses. And it lets Azure figure out where to route it. So uh, for this one, I'm just going to put in 10.0.0.0 and do a slash 16 which is what I put in on my local gateway, my local network gateway in Azure. And then on the remote network, I'm going to put in a network on that side, which is going to be 10.1.0.0. And it's a slash 16 as well. And that will cover pretty much all of the subnets on the Azure side. And so I'm gonna put in Azure uh, site to site. And this is where I want to configure the settings for the phase two proposal, which is, basically the same settings I put on the other side. So I'm going to use AES, 256-bit key length. And then uh, I'm not I'm not going to use this, but I'm going to set SHA-256 for the hash algorithm. And I'm going to use PFS group key two right here. And so those are the same settings I put into Azure. So if I save this, I now have my phase one and phase two configured. 
and I can apply changes. And then the next thing to do is actually connect it. So to do that, we're gonna go over to status and click on IPsec, and then we're going to click connect VPN. And if all goes well, we should see established. And that means that the um, network is established. Now it takes a few seconds or minutes for the actual um, representation to show up in Azure, but if it shows up here as established, generally speaking, that means you're successfully connected. So I will, I'll wait a few seconds and then I'll show you the Azure side to show you it's connected on that side as well. So PFSense is showing that this is connected. And now let's look at the VPN side and this is going to be the Azure side. So we come down here to connections, we can see that it's connected on this side. So that means that it's seeing each other on both sides. Now let's uh, try to connect to a resource, which in this case is gonna be a virtual machine. I just created a virtual machine that has a, a private IP address. So this is the virtual machine right here. It's got no public IP address associated with it. So I want to connect to its private IP address. So I'm gonna click connect and it's going to give me 10.1.0.4 which is in that range I gave my virtual network in Azure, it's also the range that I put into PFSense. And so this means that traffic should route from my local box here up to PFSense. And then PFSense will see, oh, that's Azure traffic and then route it over the VPN. And then of course, Azure will see that and then route it to the appropriate virtual machine on the other side. So let's go ahead and launch RDP and paste in this address right here and connect and it's asking me for a password. I can put in a password and log in. Of course, it's uh, not a public cert, so private cert, and I should see Windows 11. And so yeah, this is a remote desktop experience using Windows 11. So again, uh, connected to this over the VPN, uh, and this is streaming RDP traffic from a Azure VM back to a local RDP client over that VPN connection that I had. So this is, a pretty typical use case, something like this would be something that you would use a VPN for. Um, you probably don't want to use RDP on the public internet if you want to do that in a production oriented environment. Of course, I've done that in the past for just demos and things like that, but for um, production oriented environments or places that are you know, secure, use a VPN and then you can connect and have a secure connection between the VM and your uh, local context. And of course, Azure resources like SQL servers or other databases that have private endpoints or apps that have private endpoints, uh, you can connect to those as well. But all this is just to show you that it is working and I do have a remote desktop experience running over a VPN to Azure. So uh, hopefully this has been informative to you. If you like the content, please like and subscribe to the channel. I, I do publish content at least once a week, uh, typically Azure related content. And I just wanted to do a video on this particular topic because it's something that I do all the time. And hopefully this will be useful to other folks that do similar things with Azure and IPsec and PFSense. And of course, PFSense is not the only game in town. There are other firewalls out there that will give you a uh, IPsec option for connecting to up to the Azure virtual network gateway. So this is the one that I use. So I thought I would share how I do it. And you can certainly do the same with your firewall if you're using PFSense, of course, just follow along and you'll have a connection with your Azure resources on PFSense in your particular context, and you'll be able to use it. So again, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again on a future video. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.